Cypress. Education beyond boundaries. Now, let's understand screening process workflow. First is database search. Second is adverse media search. And third is report compilation. Following databases are searched. LexisNexis Anti-Money Laundering Solutions. World Check, RDC. BSA Hotlist, Internal to Bank. OFSC Screening List. Adverse Media Checks. Reveal involvement with money laundering, financial fraud, drug trafficking, financial threat, organized crime, financial terrorism, and more. These are obtained from a range of sources like Internet search, newspaper online radio news broadcasts, county court judgments, is that notices or other material captured in the media. While screening customers, a lot of hits are obtained for them, which may include scenarios like common name. Name appears in news article, but the article is not related to the customer. Customer is deceased or no more in existence. The report compilation is done including exact or most close matches to the customer, confirming a match. Once the screening is conducted, the results are analyzed to determine whether it is a true or a false positive match. True matches are the one which are related to the party we have screened, whereas false positive are not related. Common factors to determine are 1. Name mismatch, for example, Robert B.S., Robert Toe. 2. Age mismatch. 3. Gender mismatch. 4. Location mismatch. And 5. Is government ID mismatch. All the true matches are then disposition based on materiality of the hit. Determine materiality. If it is a match, determine if it is significant. Is it material, not material? Not material are events that do not impair the overall governance of the customer and do not impact the client. Example, associate was arrested on misdemeanor charges, personal misconduct that does not result in litigation or charges, normal course of business litigation with immaterial impact to business operations, other minor infractions, not impacting the relationship material are events that could impair the overall governance of the customer and could impact the client. Example, adverse or derogatory findings potentially. Financial crimes related offenses or charges require EDD. Regulatory findings, sanctions, significant fines. Events deemed material may result in enhanced due diligence and a customer exit. To determining materiality, one should ask the below questions. What is the nature of the article? How old is the article? Is the issue still ongoing or has the material event ended? Was the article about a lawsuit? Does the article mention a settlement? If the matter was resolved, how did it end? Example, fine, bankruptcy, SEC sanction, termination of BO. Does the article mention substantial fines or lawsuit amounts? What is the relationship between the entity individual that alerted and the customer? Example, affiliate, trustee, parent, shareholder, guarantor. Material negative news includes, but not limited to, PEP matches, OFSC matches, financial crimes news about the subject negative news, which might pose a reputational or regulatory risk to the financial institution, restricted entities individuals as per the bank internal list, money service businesses, dealing with narcotic substances, involvement in producing, transporting, helping to create weapons of mass destruction, operating in high-risk jurisdictions, customer owns or operates casinos or internet gambling websites. Non-material negative news includes, but not limited to, DUI convictions, IPA infringement litigations, environmental issues, family disputes. This is not an exhaustive list. Materiality of news depends on the gravity of the offense and consequences thereafter. Let's understand disposition. A good disposition must include the following. Issue summary, relationship, current status, materiality, summary of negative, adverse news, who is involved, what is the news and how old is it? How does the news related to the products or services offered by the client? What is the relationship between the entity, individual that is alerted and the customer? Example, affiliate, trustee, parent shareholder, guarantor, etc. What impact does the beneficial owner's duties and role have on the negative news? Is the entity, individual that is alerted still active with the customer? That is, still an employee or were they terminated, etc. 
Is the issue ongoing or has it ended, settled, and if resolved? How did it end? That is, in a fine, bankruptcy, etc. Is it material news requiring further review? Escalation. If it requires further review, mention all reasons, suspicions. If not, mention all factors or activities that mitigate it as not material. Verification is a process by which the bank form a reasonable belief that it knows the true identity of each customer, based on the accuracy and association of some or all of the identifying information name that the customer must provide, the customer provides. Verification is done through 1. Documentary verification. This is done through obtaining a photo identify proof from customer, example. Adhar, PAN, passport, company's registration, certificate, etc. 2. Non-documentary verification. This is done through use of databases like LexisNexis, government registries, voter lists, Secretary of State filings, etc. Let's understand, what is risk rating? A key component of the financial institution's BSA AML program is to understand the risk associated with establishing a relationship with customer and assess the BSA AMC at risk ongoing basis to enable bank to monitor the activity of the customer as per their risk profile. To identify the potential risks associated with an existing customer the financial institutes utilizes the customer risk rating methodology developed based on the CDD attributes of the customer profile. Based on customer risk rating, the bank decide on where EDD is needed. Any specific due diligence required like PDD, product due diligence, a time frame for periodic reviews. Now, let's understand common risk rating attributes. Jurisdiction, weak AML regulations, political instability and corruption, entity type, Legal formation obscures beneficial ownership. Industry. Nature of customer business is susceptible to money laundering. Product. Products offered by the bank susceptible to money laundering. Channel. Methods of delivery which obscures the end user. Screening. PEP. Negative news which can pose a risk to bank. Now, let's understand examples of high-risk attributes. Jurisdiction. Sanction nations, Iran, North Korea, Syria, Cuba, Afghanistan, Yemen, Somalia, Sudan. Entity. Foreign Correspondent Bank, Embassies, Complex Ownership Structures, Bearer Share Ownership, Nonprofit Organization. Industry. Money Service Business, Arms Dealers, Wholesale Jewelry, Cash Intensive and High Volume Business. Product. Cash and Currency Services, Cross Border Wire Transfer, Correspondent Accounts, Escrow Accounts, Private Banking. Online banking, channel, online banking, non-face-to-face, third-party intermediaries, screening, prior bankruptcy, identified as PEP, pending criminal case. Let's understand ODD. Financial institutions are required to keep identifying any money laundering risk. For this, the financial institution takes detective measures to ensure that they are not just reporting but also preventing from happening of any money laundering. The ongoing due diligence measures are 1. Transaction monitoring. The transitions processed by the bank are continuously evaluated and screened to find any suspicious transaction. This helps the financial institution to evaluating monitoring effectiveness, conducting transactional analyses, and lookbacks. 2. Suspicious activity reporting. Once a transaction is identified as suspicious, it has to be reported timely to the Financial Intelligence Unit's FIU and regulators. This helps the financial institution in identifying higher-risk customers, evaluating effectiveness of controls. 3. Independent testing. The financial institution has to evaluate their controls by conducting independent audits to ensure they comply with regulatory guidances. It helps the financial institution to Implementing significantly higher demands on audit. Increasing governance and oversight. 4. Sanctions monitoring. The financial institutions also keep screening to ensure they are not transacting with any party who is sanctioned or lives in a sanctioned jurisdiction. This helps the bank in preventing money laundering and terrorist financing, providing valuable inputs to the government. 
Let's understand detecting money laundering. The financial institutions are required to detect and report suspicious activity. They must establish methods to recognize and escalate suspicious activity in order to comply with regulatory requirements. A formal detection and reporting processes aid them in meeting this obligation. An effective monitoring program should include 1. Policies, procedures and processes to monitor, detect, escalate and report suspicious activity. 2. Effective monitoring systems, which are risk-based and place emphasis on monitoring of high-risk products, customers, entities, and geographical boundaries. 3. Adequate staff to identify, research, investigate, and report suspicious activity. 4. Training of employees to recognize and escalate unusual or potential suspicious activity. Let's discuss methods of detection. There are two type of detection here. First, through CDD profile processes. Second is, based on transaction monitoring. Methods of detection through CDD profile process. 1. Identity of customers should be verified. 2. Customers who present fake or unfamiliar documents should be escalated to compliance department. 3. Discrepancies between information presented by customer and information available to customer through non-documentary methods, example. Credit reports, internet or database search should be investigated. 4. Customers whose behavior information is unusual and does not make sense, example. Reluctant to provide information for beneficial owners or key professionals, acting very nervous while opening account, opening account in a faraway location from home, should be escalated. 5. Training of employees that have contact with customers during the account opening stage is crucial to detecting suspicious activity at this stage. Methods of detection based on transaction monitoring. Manual transaction monitoring involves review of various reports generated by financial institution or vendor system for suspicious activity. May involve discretionary dollar or activity thresholds. Examples include, but not limited to, currency activity records, funds transfer records, monetary instrument records, active account reports. Automated transaction monitoring involves use of monitoring systems to detect transactions or patterns of transactions that deviate from expected activity. Rule-based systems detect transactions outside of established rules or scenarios. Intelligent systems adapt analysis of transactions over time to change in activity patterns, customer base, and other data. Case 1. Customer Description 22-year-old male Scenario Our bank customer, who is 22 years old, receives four six wires a year from Pakistan, from an individual that appears not to be related. The individual has a Florida address on file. The day after every wire is received, a check for the same amount is written against the account and deposited in a bank in Tennessee in a college town. Sometimes the checks are written to cash and cashed by multiple individuals who do not appear related to the receiver of the funds. What are potential red flags which could have been identified? Customer Description U.S. resident alien, scenario, our bank customer made numerous domestic cash deposits to his personal account, which were followed by several ATM withdrawals in a high-risk jurisdiction on the same day. Additionally, customers sent numerous wires to various individuals in high-risk jurisdictions. What are potential red flags which could have been identified? Customer description, brokerage activities, scenario, Broker executes non-discretionary purchases and sales of a low-priced stock for multiple customers. Sales were made for repeat customers. Purchases on same day are made by other customers of the brokerage firm. No net increase in firm's overall stock record for the security. Sales move more than one-third of the security s issued anode standing shares. Stock price has been increasing. Stock becomes subject of SEC frag investigation. Selling customers' connection to the stock is not so by broker or by the brokerage firm. Transactions accounts for a substantial portion of broker's annual commission income. Stock issuer had virtually no asset. Hotel developer building a resort next to a cemetery. What are potential red flags which could have been identified? Customer description. Average insurance customer. Scenario. Life policy account had its face value increased by customer from $5 million to $50 million. Shortly after the face value increase, the client deposited 20 U.S. postal money, orders totaling $19,233.63.
client was purchasing the money orders on the same day from multiple post offices. The client also deposited a $1,000 personal check with a batch of $9,000 in multiple money orders under the reporting threshold of $10,000. What are potential red flags which could have been identified?